Let's go indeed. Nerk mind. Michael. First name basis now, right? Good morning. 99, how's it going? Today is a special day because uh, I don't really do Tuesdays, but today is Monday and I can't, I don't think I could do tomorrow. So I woke up early and uh, we're doing today. I was actually too excited to sleep. I felt like, I felt like a child. It was amazing. Um, last night, this whole weekend, something crazy happened. Picasso, what is up? So something crazy happened and it all started, it all started with the big raid that we had on Thursday. Here's what happened. The big raid happened, right? And then I got a little wishlist spike the next morning. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Wishlist spike. And then uh, the next day, I was expecting the wishlist to go back to nothing, you know, or like, you know, two or three, whatever they normally are. But it shot up again, like tripled. I was like, okay, I wonder what's going on here. So I did some social media, I did some tweeting. Um, and then someone reached out and was like, oh, I think I found where your wishlist came from because my tweet was basically, where did these wishlists come from? Because <laughs> they couldn't have been from the Raiders. Raiders, you know, Twitch is, it's a great community, but it's not a place to get wishlists. And then, He's like, oh, I think it was this article that someone wrote up. And it wasn't really an article. They just took the screenshots from my Steam page and copy and pasted my description, which <laughs> still, it's great. Uh, which was on My Potato, which I have heard of. That is a thing I have heard of. My Potato Games. And um, so I'm like, oh, cool. 25 wish lists from a little, from an article on, on the internet. That's great. That makes me so excited. And then the next day, I woke up, I'm like, okay, it must have dropped now because everyone saw the article already and now it's good to go. But no. And then it tripled again. And it was the most wishlist I've ever gotten in one day. Even bigger than launch day. Bigger than a semi-successful Reddit post that I had. Um, and here we are. Overnight, or over the last three days, I've gotten like 20% like of all of my wishlists are from the past three days. And... That's nice. It did drop today. It didn't keep going up. Why is there a stream today? Because I can't, I don't think I could do tomorrow. And, and I was just saying, I was too excited to sleep. So I just woke up to flip the switch. Uh, yeah, we'll see. So one of the problems though, is that I had release date as 2024 in my trailer and on Steam. And I need to, I need to change that. It's not coming out in 2024. I don't want to immediately disappoint a bunch of people, but <clears throat> this game is coming out in 2025. The demo is coming out in 2024. Can I say a release date? And mm, that's just the demo release date. Um, so yeah, but because of all this attention, I am furiously trying to get my alpha done. Um, I really, uh, I really got to hustle, so. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing today. Um, let's see. What I made a little to-do list. My, my my wife helped me make this to-do list. She's very good at keeping me focused. I'm very like, ah, oh, I want to work on a little bit of everything and these silly little bugs that keep popping up. She's like, no, just work on what's necessary to get your health done. I'm like, okay, you're right. I know you're right. All right, so I have a, a, a little list here. And I need to hit them. I need to hit this list. And then I can release my friggin' alpha. Wait, there's one more thing I need to do. Um, make or, uh, button up all zones so we don't see the HDR. Okay. <clears throat> so how's everybody else doing? Welcome, welcome in, happy Monday. Hope your weekends are well, good. Whatever word is grammatically correct there. Um, yeah, I had a I had a pretty good weekend, and then I've been I've been complaining about how getting rid of a car lease is the hardest thing in the world to do. I think I'm I think someone finally stepped up and was like, I'll take your lease. So that was <laughs> that's probably what's putting me in a better mood than the wish lists because it's just been weighing on my soul. <laughs> so hard to get rid of a lease. 
All right, so ad cover. All right, let's. This is a big one. This is my number one uh, thing I want to do. Is that the guests? So we got them saving. That's amazing, and I can't believe we did most of that on stream. We got them saving and persistent. And uh, I was working on uh, basically like when you talk to them, there's three options: what do you need, how you doing, and can I make any recommendations? My area is gonna have no water for the rest of the week. Oh my god, ninety-nine. Are you okay? Is it a? Is it because of like weather, or? I hope it's not trout. Well, I hope it's not anything serious. I mean, I know, I know, like uh, bad, bad weather can stop the water because it contaminates it. I'm very sorry to hear that. What do you got to do in those instances? Fill up a bathtub or something? Fill up a bunch of buckets now so you have enough water for the week. Oh, the main pipe. Oh, so it's plumbing issues. Jeez. Okay. Well, that's not good. That's uh, at least that's fixable. Well, I hope I hope things get sorted out in a in a safe manner for you. Hmm. Oh, that's rough. <clears throat> that is rough. Very sorry. All right, uh, let's see. Seth, how's it going? Good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome in. I have a 120 liter tank full. Me and your father. Okay, that's good. 120, 120 liters, that's huge. All right, you sound, you sound safe. I'm glad to hear it. All right, so these guests, they got three things. Hotspots, items, and, and their stories. So these are the three things you can say to them. And right now I'm working on the item that they calculate that they want. How do I calculate which item they want? And I need to make sure it's like something attainable, right? So I've got these tier collections, these tiered item collection uh, sets. Tier 1 guest requests, Tier 2 guest requests. It's basically just a list of items and some conditions. Jesus. Jesus, good morning. I just love greeting Jesus in the morning. Beth, uh, I'm curious, how did you create assets for this game? So I uh, made most of them. Um, and I, you know, implored, I employed the use of the asset store on Unity. Uh, for like this screen here, the character actually had a friend um, model the base mesh of the character. So like, I can't move it out of the way, but um, like the body itself, uh, like the skin um, that was created by a friend. <clears throat> and then I made uh, the eyes and the mouth and all the facial features. And I made some of the shoes and the pants. And then I downloaded a bunch of clothing and a bunch of hair from a couple of asset packs. Slap them all together. Boom. We got customizable characters. It has a great cohesive. So first of all, thank you. I appreciate it. Second of all, I think one of the things that is keeping the cohesive style, and I recommend everyone doing this. I recommend everyone who's a solo dev who's working on a 3D game to do this is, first of all, make sure you start with a color palette. Stick to that color palette. And not only stick to that color palette, but uh, I have um, every, almost, almost every texture in the game references um, this one asset, this one texture called, oh my god, where is it? Uh, what did I call it? <laughs> Matt, Matt. Color Alice Matt. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Here it is. So this this texture right here. Oh, my head's in front of it. This texture right here. Every single material in the game. Uh, ninety percent. Ninety percent of the materials in the game reference this color texture. And all I do is I take the UVs of the models and I put them in the little squares of the colors I want. I mean, obviously you could see that there's grass here and the 
in the dirt. Oh my god. Excuse me, my morning voice. <laughs> Obviously you can see the grass and the dirt do not use that, but they do match some of the values on this thing. So that's how you get a cohesive color style. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I've just been very diligent about picking the right assets that, that go, you know, just subtle gradients, soft edges. Like this guy is like the ideal model. It's, everything's kind of soft and uh, gentle. This one's a little harsh. This is this table is actually from an asset pack. Everything on this table is from an asset pack. That's why everything is a little like harsh. But this one's nice and soft. This is this is the goal here. This is the goal right here. Soft. You've done that with Blender, yeah. I actually I, I got it from like a Blender. I'm I'm sure the asset was made in Blender. Like this asset was definitely made in Blender and by a Blender artist. And uh, yeah, highly recommended. I did one thing, I, I went one step further. So that this atlas, this color atlas, was actually from the asset pack. So what I did was I color tweaked it, like I color corrected it to be the colors that I wanted. And then I added these little gradients. Um, let me click it. So you can see in each one of these tiles, it's not just a solid color. There's a gradient in the top third of it, or in the top like 20% of it, there's a gradient that goes a little lighter. And in the bottom is a gradient that goes a little darker. So, um, so if I if I needed to like alter just slight hue difference or slight value difference, I can I can use that gradient. Or if I have something that like I want to fake ambient occlusion, like a ground shadow or some kind of whatever reason, you know, I want to add some gradient. You know, you can put the UVs in those little gradients, and that's helpful. There's some items in the game that use like their own special textures, like this, uh, like these leaves. These leaves are like their own thing. Um, but they're, they're the same colors. They're all the same colors. So pick a color palette and use use your color palette for everything. Be diligent. All right, so um, how many colors should be in a palette? Honestly, it's up to you. It's up to the game, the, the look and feel of uh, you know how complex the visuals need to be. Um, think about your, uh, your environments. You know, obviously, I'm in the forest. I need lots of greens and browns. If you're in a dungeon, maybe you're making an infinite runner in the dungeon. Maybe you need to think of other kinds of colors, not not greens, maybe more blues and and I don't know, grays, different values of gray, warm warms and maybe lavas like reds. Um, all the colors indeed. I have done that, but yeah, nice. I uh, didn't know you can do that in Unity. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, all the assets are made in uh, Blender or Maya. I use Maya. I'm a Maya guy. But also uh, the music. I'm trying to I'm trying to mess with the music values. Let me know if the music is too soft or too loud. I want it to be heard because I I love this music. Oh my god! First of all, this music. Uh, these are lo-fi beats created by Kilika Beats of Final Fantasy uh, songs. Fin uh, they're incredible. I love. I love we got a very uh, generous permission to use use their music. So that's what we're doing. All right. So the last thing I was doing, uh, I was working on this two days ago. I was working on conditions for these tiered item collections. Tier one guest requests. So these tier one, these tiered collections of of items they're ba they're basically attached to the to the to the guests and how a guest calculates what it asks for is it it ticks through all the um well it, sh it will tick through all of the item collections check the conditions see if it's a, see if it can grab something from there and then ask for it um and i just have to carefully uh design my my collections uh to be attainable and make sure that my conditions match whether or not the items in the collections are attainable. So tier one, it should be basically any things attainable from day one of the game. You know, the game starts, all the items in tier one should be attainable immediately without without too much like uh, obstacles, not too many obstacles. So, um, and I also need to be able to 
define that. So how do you define what's a tier one item, what's a tier two item? Like, you know, it's kind of it's kind of ethereal the idea of it. Well, you know, what is a, an obstacle that is, uh, you know, what's a large game obstacle that would stop you from gating a tier two item in tier one? Like, these are the things I'm trying to think about and uh, you know organize the game in my head. Uh, I would say like let's co let's compare it to another game. Um, you know, let's say Stardew Valley for instance. I would consider that um, the different tiered items are they're kind of uh, they're kind of segmented by what ore you have access to. I feel like so when you first start the game, you <clears throat> like tier one is not even ac having access to the mines. So you know, your your whatever's available is available in the shops or what's given to you by NPCs immediately. That's like tier one. Tier two, I feel like, is when you've played the game for a couple of hours and you have access to the, uh, the, you know, copper. When you access copper, that unlocks a whole slew of items in the game that you can use to craft other items. So tier tier one or tier two items to me in Stardew Valley is unlocking copper and unlocking all the things that are related to copper and all the things you can make with the things that you made from copper, right? And so on and so forth. Silver, tier three, gold, tier four, you know, and everything after. And then when you get to the desert, that's like tier five. So to me, that's how Stardew Valley breaks up the tiers. Let's think of another game. Um, Yanni boy, what is up? Good morning. Yo, that Steam game that you posted on the Game Dev Field Guide Discord channel, ridiculous. Absolutely, I tried understanding what it was, and I tried reading all the reviews. I'm like, what is this? No, Steam reviewers, they know that they're like in on the joke, and they will not tell you what this game is. Um, yeah, where was I? Right. So let's think of another game that's broken up by tiers. Uh, uh so Fay Farm. Fay Farm just came out. It's a nice, cozy game, um, and I feel like Fay Farm is broken up similarly by. Uh, by you know the the resource that's available to you, um, but more so the dungeon that's available to you because the the dungeons go by quick. Like you get new resources pretty often, so I would say that the tiers are more broken up by the dungeon a lot like available to you. And there's like four dungeons, I believe. You have to play. Oh, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Can I even play it on Mac? Uh. I'm gonna just pretend I can't. Oh, my Mac, I can't play, sorry. Sometimes it's a great excuse to not play a game if I don't want to. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's awesome. So it's all dungeon based. These life sims all have dungeons and I don't wanna add dungeons. So how do I, the non-dungeon, I don't have dungeons yet. I do plan on adding them, but I didn't wanna make them like the blocker to the core loop, right? <laughs> yeah, Macs are great for not playing games. They, if, you, if you ever want dev advice, like, oh, how do, how do you find time to make a game? Um, just get a Mac, get rid of your PC. There, now you can't play games anymore. <laughs> you have way more time for game dev. <laughs> Pro tip, get a Mac. You heard it here. I wonder if there actually is some kind of data that proves that. I'll say you can't afford games. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's great yeah exactly just spend all your money on the Mac so now you can't afford games you can't install them boom plenty of time for game dev 25 man raids when mm hmm what you talking about Jesus uh all right, so yeah, I don't want the game to be blocked by dungeons exclusively. And, but it, you know, I gotta, I gotta really understand the genre and the genre is item collection and crafting things that unlock other things. It's always, that's always the thing. It's like, you can't really continue with the game because this item you need to craft requires this ore or requires this item, which is only gotten at this point in the game. So, I do need to figure that out more properly. Uh, but, you know, we have things that are broken up into tiers and guests are those things. For dungeons, you can add, oh, 
Oh, you mean, you mean like in the game, am I gonna make 25 man raids in the Zenkeeper sim? I thought you, uh, I thought you were talking about like on Twitch, someone raided with 25 people and I'm like, how are you in the future? I don't even see that yet. You need like a trip advisor arc where the dungeons are upgrading your in advisor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I actually want to show you guys, I had a prototype in the game of, uh, of a real website where you can take screenshots in the game and upload your in to a real website. I've been keeping this feature a secret, um, but I just let the cat out of the bag, didn't I? Uh, you prompted me. So let me see if I can actually bring it up. How do I? All right, you're all web devs. I'm sure you're all web devs. How do I bring up local host? Local host. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So this is a real website that I have um, where these screenshots are all taken in the game with a screenshot tool. And let's say, let's just click on one. You can, I mean, this is a bunch of default images, but you can upload a cover page um, and a profile image and then a bunch of secondary images. And it uploads your in name, it uploads your username, you know, whatever the, your name in the game is. It uploads, uh, this description actually comes from nowhere. I don't have a place to put in the description, but it also uploads an average star rating from all your guests and how many guests you've, uh, you have, and then how much time you've played. Is there a main story where you, uh, could up the tiers based on certain points of that? Well, so you up the tiers of your inn by decorating it nice. But I guess the I guess the way I have it is that these jumps are kind of exponential. So it's not like you can just like make a bunch of like chairs, throw it in, and it'll add up to your higher tier. You really need like the tier two items to upgrade your inn to tier two, like. And uh, you know, I feel like I I feel like uh there should be a guy or a gal who's a reviewer who comes to your inn and stays and uh, basically judges your inn and allows you to be tier two. Like you might have all the decorations to be tier two, but this person, this like crit critic, this inn critic, travel critic should basically be the blocker and you need to satisfy this person and then that's how you upgrade. Um, and that's all well and good. So I don't need to implement all this right now, but I just need to have it there because the alpha needs to reflect that. Like when I make the alpha, I'm probably not going to include the full, uh, the full life cycle of your in, you know, this is, it's not really a vertical slice. It's more like a beginning chunk that will just be open-ended and, you know, go on infinitely without, with the lack of the story. I might have shown this a while ago. If I did, I forgot, but I called it Tripsy. No, wait, I called it Tripsy in code, but then I have this logo called get away, get dot away, because I wanted to get this URL. Um, actually, did I get it? Get dot away. I'm afraid. Okay. I don't know if dot away is, is allowed, but I thought that that's kind of what I wanted. Will you be telling them uh, when to come or will they be showing up uh, every so many days? I was thinking that as soon as your inn has the necessary requirements to be tier two, then they'll show up. Like if you decorate your inn to a certain point, that's like, it can be tier two. Like it reaches the statistical requirements, which will be clear to the player. Then, or maybe like a certain amount of reviews. I don't know. Yeah, there should be something. I like it to be on the more realistic side. So maybe like a guest comes and maybe once you hit tier one or once you hit tier two requirements and a guest stays, they're like, whoa, this is way better than a tier one in. I need to tell my friends about this. And then it gets to this person somehow through the story. And they're like, oh, I heard your in is crazy good. And I'm like, oh, so let me come and judge it. Something like that. You have a lot more control over the website if you make your own, but you could probably have all of this directly on Steam in the community tabs if you wanted. Well, that's true, but what about consoles? What about iPad? I don't know. 
I don't want it to only be Steam. But I, I hear what you're saying. Like, it's better to keep it in an ecosystem. It's, more, it's way more uh, convenient. Um, yeah, but then you want your own one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I do want my own website. I, <laughs> I hired someone on Fiverr to, to, kick, to kick that up. To get that up and running, and they, they did a good job. They kind of like copied and pasted a bunch of old websites that they made to slap together some. There's like you can log in, you can go to your dashboard and manage your profile. Like there's actually a lot of behind the scenes in that website. It's a lot of extra effort. Oh yeah, I would never do it unless someone did it for me. Like I would never make this game and make that website. I would only do that website if I had a dedicated web de web developer. Maybe when you get to the requirements, you can make an appointment with the guy. Yeah, that's a good one too. Like you reach out. So I have this character called Stella and she's a, she's like a public, she works in publication and she was making a documentary. She might, is she might be the perfect NPC to realize, hey, you're in is actually way better than you think it is. Let me call my, let me call my colleague who, who's like the travel critic for the newspaper I work for. That's, I think we just did it. I think we just did. So Stella hint, she's appealing. Stella also. Uh, so here I'm, uh, I'm trying to like dot uh, all the things that I want to like tell the player, um, but not actually implement. And they're like hints at future at, at what the game is going to be. So Stella um, has a colleague, baseball colleague. <laughs> Oh God, there we go. That was embarrassing. Colleague who is the uh, travel columnist who rates your in and unlocks the different tiers. We did it. We did it on stream. We thought of a mechanic and it makes sense. I love it. All right, let's code something. I need to work on this uh, collection condition and the item requester itself. And let's see. All right, so ins have tiers and these tiers um, are what? Are they a proficiency? Or I think they're in stats actually. I think it's not a proficiency, it's an instat. And an instat can be checked from the conditions. So that's good. I have proficiency, I have skill, required skill. Oh, this is what I was working on. So I don't want a proficiency, I want a proficiency condition. This is a new thing I wrote. So I made a class that allows me to, it's basically just a class that um, I need to check and I'll put in a passes or public pool passes condition. So any, any, um, any script that uses these item collections, you know, they're, they need to, they need to call this passes conditions function first to see if they're allowed to. I'm going to let them uh, manage that themselves. Or do I want to get random and or get null? And if it's null, re respond to the null. You, de you developers out there tell me what's the better thing to do? Should I make the scripts, call passes conditions, then get the thing? Or should I just have them try and get the thing and respond to a null? What's the best thing to do? I don't know. And while you're all thinking of that answer and typing your answers, uh, allow me to introduce myself to anyone who's new here. My name is Andrew. I'm working on a game called Alpine Lake. It's an innkeeper sim, life sim game. Give you a little, give you a little peek at the gameplay. Give it a little wish list if you feel like it. I'm here two times a week. I've been doing like a random third stream every once in a while. Um, but that's gonna, that's gonna normalize eventually. My life's a little, uh, a little wild right now. I've just got a lot going on. So sometimes I can't do my normal time. So I'll do random times like today, today's random. I don't normally do Mondays. 
only do Tuesdays and Thursdays. But yeah, Alpine Lake, it's, uh, it's inspired heavily by Stardew Valley and The Sims. And it's inspired by The Sims in that you can build your own homes. Your own hotel, your own, your own inn, whatever you want to call it. So there's a whole construction system. Where you can build walls and floors and doors and windows and roofs. All the good stuff. nothing in the way stop complaining so now we have our rooms we can define them I actually need these for debugging purposes anyway so you can name them if you want guest room two oops guest room three guest room four and then and open your inn. You get mail. You get quests. You got a new quest. You got a quest journal. There, there's everything. There's everything. And right now we're working on um, what are we working on? We're working on uh, managing what kind of items these guests want. So here's Hollis. Let's check her in. Let's see what she wants. She introduces herself. She has a bunch of standards on the right, so she has style standards. She has very high style standards. And that's why she always leaves one star when we're debugging. Because she, her sty style items are a little later. Uh, right first it's like, insp or wait a minute, style, fun, and inspiring. Those are all activities. Where are the decorations? Oh, they don't show up if they're zero. So that's why they're not showing up. Okay. Yeah, so she's kind of hard to please in the beginning of the game. All you have are like regular beds. So here's what we're trying to work on right now. When I say need anything, hey, do you need anything? She says, can you get me a green tea? Okay. So green tea is in the tier one collection of items. So that means, theoretically, green tea should be attainable the, the moment you start the game. But technically that's not true. T green tea is only available if you have a tea brewing kit or a, a beverage brewing station now so here's what i need to do i need to reverse engineer all the items on the tier one list and make them attainable from the moment you start the game without too much in the way oh my god so if anyone's played the final fantasy 7 uh remake this song, oh my god, it's so freaking catchy. I love it so much. And I love this rendition of it. So the brewing kit, let's see, where is it? Brewing station, there it is. So let's just pop it somewhere. Look at it, it's adorable. It's got a teapot, it's got, it's got a French press. And when you click it, first, Tuna's first. How did you get here first? I'm pretty sure I've been talking to people this whole time. <laughs> Good morning, Tuna. How's it going? So the brewing station, it accepts things that can be brewed. You can't add foundation, you can't add a sledgehammer, but you can add, oh, this tea. And it already finished and it popped out green tea. Okay. Oh no, I hit the V. Make it rain again. Why can't I brew foundation? Because foundation is only made in the gravel grinder. Alright, so Hollis is running around frantically, and they wanted tea. Actually, I don't, rem I don't even remember what gender Hollis is. It doesn't matter. There is no gender in this game. Wait, no, stop. Slow down. I can't get to you. All right, I have the guests running really fast because of debug purposes. Hi. Second. All right, so I have it for them, but when I talk to them, 
I kind of want this to switch to here's your green tea. Because right now, if I just use the green tea with them in front of me, it says thanks. And it gives it to them. But that's, that, that's like the Stardew Valley way of doing it, which I think a lot of people complain about. Because um, you're constantly accidentally giving items to people and uh, can't brew a sledgehammer. Unwishlisted. How many different teas can you make? So right now I just have the one. I just have green tea. Um, but what I so what I learned, I did some research. What I learned is that all almost all tea, uh, except herbal tea, but any any most teas, green, black, oolong, or, you know, red tea, white tea, they're all made from the same one leaf. It's just how you prepare the leaf before you brew the tea, right? So what I wanted to do is you collect this leaf, right? Um, and if you just brew it, it makes a tea. If you, maybe you can roast it and then it turns into a roasted tea and then you can make like a roasted tea item or, you know, I have to, I have to look up the processes of, of what you do to the leaf before and, and somehow fit it into the way the game works. But I did want to do that to make the different teas. Like they could all stem from this one tea leaf, or maybe I'll make a few tea leaves, you know, just to gamify it a little bit. Or I'll make like a premium tea leaf and you can only make certain teas from the premium tea leaf found deep in the forest. But right now you can find these tea leaves uh, just along your inn. And I do want multiple kinds of teas. And then maybe like a tea latte. Look, oh, they're still they're still happy about it. That, sh that should go away. What else? Uh, so yeah, so this need anything. Oh, I'd love a green tea. They want another green tea. That's, that's rare. Wait a minute. So... The only reason why I'm saying that's rare is because there's a lot of different items they can choose from, and for them to choose green tea randomly twice... Oh wow, the UI doesn't snap. So we're making a couple more green teas. Alright, made four. So now we have four green teas, let's give them another one. That's not a green tea. You're right, it's a sledgehammer. <laughs> Oh wow, that, that I don't think I ever tried to test that. I'm surprised that worked. Hollis arrived today and is checking out tomorrow. Oh no. Do you think they'll still accept my green tea? Is there a point? Is there a point to giving an item to someone who's checked out? Because they already paid. They just paid for the room. I don't think anything else goes into the calculation. But the relationship increases. And the relationship is important too. So there is a purpose. Let's wait till they wake up and give them the green tea. All right. Thank you. All right, so we gave it to them. And then if we talk to them, hello, I can still ask them if they need anything. But they're checked out. Ooh, okay. All right, so. All right, where do I put this? I have something here. Um, guess who are checked out? Don't leave and try to reach out. Also, also, guests who are checked who are checked out still um, what do they still do? They still are in their checked in state in the dialogue system. So you can give them items and suggestions. Let's remove that. Okay. You want to make found foundation stone soup? <laughs> All right. So I got. I do got to fix that. Let's say never mind, and then they leave, and that's that. All oh, right. I also have to fix that. Right now, they just run here, and they pop off. I do need them to continue running down the road. Alright, so what do you want? Please don't say green tea. Need anything? Get me a fried egg. Okay. So everything is basically, it's basically this list right here. And, 
Ooh, I know why. I know why they're asking for the same thing twice. Should I actually, um... Should I actually say, hey, I don't need anything else. Maybe tomorrow. That's actually what I should do. There we go. Item requester. So they shouldn't be asking for multiple things every day. They should kind of just want one thing per day. So the item collector, item requester. Get new requested item. I want to say, oh, item request refresh style. I already have this implemented, so why did they ask again? What's it, how are guests calculated? Let's see. It's possible I have it refreshing every, every like time just for debug purposes. Let's get rid of all the debug purposes stuff because we need to prep this game for an alpha release. The item requester refreshes never. What? <laughs> Let's change it to daily. Wait, on receive next day. Huh? Oh, okay. So they'll keep on receive next day means they'll they'll refresh it after the next day after they receive the thing. This is exactly what I want. I already implemented this. Thank goodness. Are they always going to want something, or is there a chance that they will ask for something else? Or is there... Um, that's a good question. Should they always want something? Should ev Yeah, you're right. Not every character should want something. Um, all the time, but they just don't stay for very long, so I feel like you won't even be able to get to all your guests. Which is another problem, because completionists are gonna have- <laughs> they're gonna have a hard time accepting that they can't satisfy every guest. I mean, if they run around talking to every guest and just spend their whole day collecting those items, it might be okay. You might be able to get four or five. But if you do that every day, you're gonna need some lulls so you can do other things in the game. I don't know, maybe it's okay. You pose a good question, Jesus. Jesus always poses the good questions. The big questions. Like, who are we? Alright, uh... So, now it's on refresh. What do they say when they don't need anything? I actually don't know. Let me check the dialogue system, maybe it'll hint at what happens, because I, I actually don't remember. So, generic responses. Not enough, not wanted, yes, no. Item thank you. I, where is it? Any chance would probably be nicer, as, yeah, I'd be trying to give them everyone, or give them to everything, or, oh my god, I can't read. I'd be trying to give them to everyone if they want it. Yes, I agree. So it might be overwhelming. I might need to do like, um, no, I'm okay for now. Oh, and actually maybe if they do want something, a little exclamation mark should pop up. So you know. Let's do that. So let's say and they wake up and there's a 50% chance they want something. And then we activate the exclamation mark on their head. We should do that. But where do I actually where do I actually make that conversation happen? Guest states, sleeping, checking in, item request. There it is. So I have a bunch of random responses, right? If you can get me a blank, I would love that. Um, can you get me a blank? And I would appreciate a blank. So, and this looks like a dynamic conversation. This this is kind of spawned within another conversation, which leads me to believe it's in the NPC dialogue helper. Nope. This leads me, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So request an item. Request item. So I get requested item. Uh, from the item requester and where do I say thank you maybe it's in the uh, the guest interactable yeah perform item interaction so oh here we go 
So if they're sitting at a restaurant, this is so this gets called when uh, when you give it, when you try and give an NPC an item, and if they're sitting at a restaurant, I get their state. If they're at a restaurant or waiting for a wanted item, first I check the order status of them sitting at the restaurant, and I see if it's one of these. But where do I check for uh, item requesters? This is purely restaurant based. Perform player interaction. Hmm. Where do I go to the item request? Oh, check item check item requester for once. So here it is. And then I jump the dialogue. So or who calls you? Who calls you? Nobody. Nobody calls this. These are functions called via send message from the dialogue. That's why nobody calls them. Ooh, these functions that are called from the editor, very dangerous. I don't they're very, uh, that's why I have this, this comment here, because otherwise I would, I would have just been like, oh, I guess I'm not using this delete and then break the game. So dangerous. Hey, Unity, if you're watching this, can you please somehow connect the Visual Studio to some kind of serialized thing that knows that functions are being called from the editor, please. So dangerous. All right, so I do, I do this and I jump the dialogue. This is what jumps the dialogue. This is how I get the requested item. Um, but how do I know? How do I know when I'm giving them the item? I don't even remember. song too. Man, the new music in Final Fantasy is so good. Generic, yes. Generic, thank you. Maybe I just say thank you. Maybe it's all in the dialogue. Like... I'd use a custom director for that, which would require convention and discipline on your side and would be perfect. Wait, how is a uh, convention and discipline perfect for me? That doesn't sound good for me. I'm just gonna... Well, yeah, please explain what you're talking about. VS Code might have that inter uh, integration with Unity. Rider does, but Visual Studio for Mac is going away. Oh no. Todd Makes, welcome in. Good morning. Uh, and... I didn't know the Visual Studio for Mac is going away. Were you the one that were were you the one a uh, couple or last week that was basically saying get Rider? I know someone. I think it was you. Just was like, you gotta get Rider. You gotta change to Rider. Oh, and wouldn't. Oh, sorry. Of course I read that. It wouldn't be perfect, I see. Actually, I think it does exist on Windows. Oh, interesting. So when I move to Japan, when I do the big move, which is coming up, oh my god. Woo, it's coming up. Uh, you use you, you do use Rider, but you don't push it. Someone was pushing it on me last week. Um, so when I move to Japan, I'm gonna upgrade, I'm gonna buy a PC because electronics are affordable there. Quite more affordable than they are in the US. So I'm gonna upgrade to a nice PC. And I'm gonna get my desk situation going. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna have a better office. Right now my office is terrible. Uh, it's like a built-in, it's built into the room and it's like the width the or the depth of my desk is very short. It's like 19 inches. So I'm like, I'm basically like, the monitor is like right here. <laughs> in other news, I might just move off Windows entirely in 2024. Oh dang. Where are you gonna go, Linux? You gonna go full? 
full computer. Just go Linux space. I, yeah, I don't remember where, like, where the hell is this? Oh, maybe it's the NPC interactable. Okay. So does guest interactable reference NPC? It, it does, it does. So I check up here, perform player interaction, and then uh, here we go. Item interaction, item requester. Here we go. Form item interaction. Uh, there we go. Then we go here. We found it. Guys, this is hard sometimes. So here I check, and then um, this is where I launch the right conversation. PC master race. No, 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 no. There is no master race. Yesterday I set up a new computer for myself, and it made me set up a Windows Hello pin, which changed my main computer login. Wait a minute. What? So I went from an actual password for my computer to a four digit pin. That doesn't sound good. All right, so what, here's what we do on successful. So we return. Oh, so right, returning true means uh, just exit. Hmm. I'm actually not going to write that. Okay. Microsoft Visual Studio Mac discontinued 9 to 5 Mac. Oh, God. All right. All right. I'll get Ryder. I'll get Ryder. Ride or die. Oh, I, uh, I learned that the... So I'm a big Fast and Furious nut. I was talking about this uh, last week on stream. And I learned that... Um, what did I call... What did I... What did I learn? Oh, that, that so what they call Fast and Furious in Japan is called, um, it's called Wild Speed. Is that what it is? Uh, Fast and Furious titles in Japan. It's called, yeah, Wild Speed. And every single one is called Wild Speed and then like Wild Speed 1, Wild Speed 2, Wild Speed Tokyo Drift. And then they get into like wacky names like Wild Speed Super Mega Mix, Wild Speed Super Combo. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. That just I don't know why that even triggered me to talk about that. But anything I can get I can get anywhere. I can get it's like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. Anything can trigger me to, to talk about Fast and Furious. Nick the Nini. Kohan. Good morning, Nick. I think it did that when I set up my laptop. Even had the same wallpaper on the desktop without asking. Oh wow, so they're like they're uploading something to a server without even you knowing. Look up what Dark Knight was called in South America. Dark Knight in South America. El Caballero de la Noches Asciende. Can you please translate that? So that's what it was called. What does that mean? Something of the night? Oh, what happened? The mix is over. Where are you at? Oh, we're moving on to Final Fantasy X. This might be my favorite one. The Gentleman of the Night. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so we just give generic responses. That's the so this is where I, this is where I don't like this scenario is that we give generic responses, and um, I don't think we stop the item requester from refreshing, and that's why they ask for the item again. So the item offered. Where do we do that? Where do we tell the item requester, "Hey, chill. We don't. We're we're good. Success." Yeah, sounds like a very different movie, indeed. The gentleman of the night. I mean, Batman's kind of a gentleman. It actually sounds more like a movie about uh, the Butler. <laughs> Je What's the Butler's name? It's not Jeeves, is it? I forget his name. I 
item request set item request wait i have an item request here no i'm in the item requester oh my god i'm so stupid alfred that's what yeah so the gentleman of the night sounds like a movie about alfred it should there should be a movie just about alfred that mostly hangs out with him like and you just kind of see batman coming and going i want to see the behind the scenes what alfred does to keep that household running you know cleaning the gadgets making sure the car is parked because he just leaves it anywhere he'll just leave that car in the middle of the city i think alfred goes and gets that car brings it back puts it in the garage makes it nice and clean you know dc you're doing the wrong thing you keep trying to be marvel you need to go the other way so i just watched oppenheimer last night i want to see i want to see christopher nolan make basically dark knight or Oppenheimer level dramatic biopic about Alfred. I think the the I think yeah, I think superhero movies are dead now. Marvel killed them. Well, I got to I got to tick through this one by one just to see what's going on. So here we just get the item. Great. Oh yeah. Oh. Sorry, every time I hear that, that do 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 do, my heart, my heart beats. It skips a beat. Um. So the item offered. Oh, the item offered is basically the 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 equipped item that the player has. Um, the equipped item that the player has, and we just check if it's a bunch of stuff. If it's null, we're not we're not doing anything. Although, how can it be null? This only gets triggered when we have an item. And something weird. This this probably never happens. Um, so, wrong item. It's not the right item. And then, quantity, quantity. If it's the amount that we need. Item offered. Okay, great. That means, so if it is, so if it passes these checks, that means we're about to destroy this item. Transaction manager, destroy item in inventory, we destroy it. Okay. Yeah, they definitely did too many. I was hugely into them, and even I've gone off superhero movies now. Yeah. I was moderately into them. You know, I've watched them all. I still enjoy them, but I don't want any more. I'm sick of, I do not want to watch. I didn't, actually, I didn't see any of the later ones. I didn't see the new, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, and, and Guardians of the Galaxy, that's like one of my favorite ones. I didn't see the new one. I just don't care. It's too much. I already know what happens. Things blow up. Someone dies. So I destroy it, and then I say I received it, and then I... Item request equals no. So I, so the item request, this is weird. I set it to null. And then I set received equals true. Okay. So here's the problem. It's, it's when I ask for another one, I don't check to see if I've received one and I don't respond to that. It wasn't the MCU's fault. It was DC, Sony and Fox's fault for constantly putting out shit. I don't know, it sounds a little fanboy-ish, Nick. DC was just trying to keep up. I don't think they ruined superhero movies. They didn't give us superhero movie fatigue because I didn't watch them. <laughs> yeah, the MCU gave me superhero fatigue. They made good ones. It doesn't, it doesn't mean they didn't make good movies. None of them were bad. That's not the issue. It's the issue. The issue is that they just made too many. Even now they're putting out mad ones? Huh? All right. Got some negative uh, negative views on the MCU. Live. Here in chat. Everyone cried at the end of Infinity Wars. Now nobody cares. Just like wrestling fans. Everyone complains. <laughs> yeah. Fan, fan groups, they get, they get jaded. And sometimes they need to go away. And new things, new things need to sprout because they went woke obviously that's the problem oh god careful with that word we don't talk about wokeness here 
nothing. All right, so I need to actually use this received um, instead of just constantly getting new ones. So, so here, where do we call this? Item requester. Get item is requested. And then, so we call it in two places. In, on, oh right, in the beginning of the day, we refresh this. If the item refresh style is on received next day and received or daily. Okay, so every day we refresh this. That's great. The other places we get a new item is if we get a requested item. And the item request is null. Okay, that's great. If it's not null, and if it's not received, we return true. Get item is requested. So if it is requested already, we return false. That's actually exactly what we want. But the problem is, who calls you? The guest interactable. Check for requested once. So if we have one, we get a new one. All right. So I think the whole problem is that since we never refresh, we never receive it. Also, nobody cared about Ant Jerk. What do you mean? I liked Ant-Man. Or the new Ant-Man? I, I didn't see the new Ant-Man. Uh, I feel like they could have in uh, could have been inclusive without it affecting the writing. Oh yeah, I don't know. You guys, you guys are talking about something specific that I didn't even catch. I just watched it for the explosions. Just feels like they are rushing the movies out these days with lower quality. Yeah, got it. They got a schedule to keep. You know, now they're so accustomed to making like a billion dollars a year. That their schedule needs their schedule just needs to make more like that's i don't know that's a problem with just corporations in general like well we made a billion last year we need to make two billion this year and there's only two ways to make double your money really the problem is capitalism okay so after watching oppenheimer last night and having this conversation it's pretty funny does everyone have their their red cards <laughs> does everyone have their their party member cards <laughs> It's almost as if corporations are ruining everything. Maybe. Yeah, gotta make profits. Gotta make them profits. Alright, so I'm trying to unravel this mess of like, why are they asking for something new? Let's actually check. Let's actually go back into the conversation and see why. So, uh, so guest generic, or guest, guest greeting. So here we go. They greet us, and then um, to conversation guest start. So we go to conversation guest start. Oops, not you. Guest conversation start. So, need anything? So I go, I send a message, and I say, check item request for once. I guess I don't have an option for now. Nah, I don't need anything. I'm good. So check item requests for once. That is the function that we were looking at earlier that I was like, yeah, so... A generic no. So that should have actually, yeah, that should have actually gone to no. So here's what we'll do. We will try it again and see if that happens again. Let's just test it again. <sighs> cold, another cold day. I started a little late today because I wasn't actually planning on streaming until... Uh, I just couldn't go back to sleep because I was too excited, like a child. I was, I was just laying there like, ooh, I wonder how many wish lists I got today because of that giant in, in, uh, Twitter post. So basically, I woke up yesterday to... Uh, or I didn't wake up yesterday to... Uh, I was I was pointed to this post from My Potato Games. What is that? What is that? Oh, it's 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 a Japanese uh, teaching video. Um, so this, my potato games. I never, you know, I never reached out to them. I'm very familiar with them, and they they made this nice little post with you know twenty eight thousand views and two hundred seventy five likes and thirty nine retweets and 
That was very generous of them. So I thought I'd wake up to a lot of wishlists, which I did wake up to a lot of wishlists today. And that was exciting. Good old Twitter. I'm so bad at Twitter. Need to get better. All right, so let's check in. Let's check in Hollis again, I guess. Oh nope, I went home. Let's check in Clay. I look like the dark helmet from Spaceballs. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of do. Me and Rick Moranis. Shout out to Rick Moranis, that poor guy. He got beat up last year in the streets, in the New York City streets. He did not deserve that. So when I say need anything, what does he need? Get me a fried egg. That's annoying. Or actually, no, that's not annoying. I think I could just grab him one down here. So, fried egg, fried egg. Here's one. Here, not fried egg. 90 fried eggs. Let's run up to him. Ugh, can't get to him. It's a good thing I have the sword. Just mow my way over to him. Oh, no, come back. <laughs> come back. How does he fit through these things so easily? Okay, there we go. Appreciate it. Now I have 89 fried eggs. So let's talk to him again. Hey there. Need anything? If you can get me a fried egg, I would love that. No. Why? Why are you saying that? So it's going back to this. Get item is requested. So item request is null. Oh, because it's null. Right? I'm, I'm setting it to null. So it's not even getting to here. It's not even getting to here. So I want to say item equals null. If if item equals null, then um, get requested item. But... Oh wait, it is getting here. This is just calling a function to get a new item request. Then it sh yeah, then it should get to here if it's not null, and if it's- Oh, but it, I think I, I uncheck received equals false. Okay. Man wants another- I know, sometimes people just want two fried eggs. Why am I even debugging this code? People want two fried eggs. So what I actually need to do, what I actually need to do is this first. No, 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 because- okay. So I think- I mean, all right, let's, let's figure this out. So if the item request equals null, that means Two things, either we've never gotten an item or we've already received one. So let's check received. If received and if received, return false, else. So if we haven't received one yet, then, then do the request. Okay, that should do it. There we go. Okay, bug fixed. He's so hungry. Man, he needs his protein. Yeah, he does need his protein. I said on Twitter the other day, if I reach 500 wish lists by the end of the year, I'll add the ability to throw a New Year's bash. And I technically hit that goal. On New Year's Day, I had like 505 wish lists. So, I gotta do that now. But my Twitter post got no attention. It was just kind of natural. It was naturally gonna happen anyway. I try to stir the pot on, on Instagram or on Twitter, and um, nobody, nobody cares. <laughs> I don't have a lot of followers, so my posts don't go anywhere. So I'm like, trying, I'm like, hey, fanfare, this is fun, right? Who wants to be involved in this silly little thing I'm doing? Nobody? Oh, okay. Now that... <laughs> it's like throwing a raffle and then nobody joining. Well, nobody won, but I still have this prize here. <laughs> Alright, let's check someone in, and then we'll... Test it. Well, nobody's showing up today. Okay, that's actually... That's possible. Um... Because I have a random number that does that does uh, happen in the beginning of the day, and maybe nobody shows up. But it's not a seated number, so if I just replay the game, then someone might show up. I do need to make it seated so it's consistent. I don't want you to be able to just restart the level every day just for different outcomes. I want it to be as consistent as possible. So I gotta switch that. Alright, so she's checked in. Need anything? Oh wait, I've, I breezed through. I don't even know what she wants. <laughs> I talked to her again. 
Can you get me a fried egg? All right, good. They're right here. Gotta get it quick. No, no, no. I catch up to her now with my fried egg. Stop. Stop. I have a fried egg. Thanks. Okay, I'll talk to you again. Hey, need anything? No, thanks. <gasps> she did it. All right. She said no thanks. And I need to make this thought bubble go away. It's annoying. All right, guys, have fun. I don't feel good today. I'm going to bed early. 99. I'm sorry to hear that. And I'm sorry to hear about the water situation. Please have a good week. Uh, feel better. Get your rest. And um, just take care of yourself. I'll catch you next time. I feel that deeply. <laughs> you mean the fact of being hungry? I'm always hungry. I am always hungry. All right, so we fixed one bug. That's good. Um, so the next thing is, uh, I don't like the, like when guests check out, the conversation should change. Like you should still be able to give them stuff, but I don't want like all those other options, like requesting uh, a hotspot or so what does it mean to be checked in? Going to join the next one. All right. I probably won't be around tomorrow. Next one will be Thursday. Ugh. Take hang in there, 99. It'll things will things will get better. Hang in there. Alright. So I should actually start devising a plan for making these tier one items attainable as well as I see them. So the so we got green tea and fried eggs. Those things are not technically attainable yet. Um, when you... Oh, actually, that's not true. Fried eggs is definitely attainable when you do Mary's... Or not Mary's. Melissa's Quest. I made a load of banana bread yesterday for the first time. I've eaten almost the whole thing already. It's good stuff. Sick. I love banana bread. Uh, there was a point in my life where uh, I worked at a specific office... And I always went to the cafe next to the office for breakfast. And they, it was, I had one of two things, either a slice of banana bread or they had, they had these little, these like individual frittata or yeah, I think I guess they're called frittatas. These individual sized frittatas. And it's definitely one of those two things every morning for two years straight. Wait, in the main game, you're not going to just have 99 fried eggs laying in the ground outside the inn? No, no, no. Yeah, no. 99 fried eggs will always be outside your inn, like in real life. I'm trying to make this game very realistic. It's just, what if you run out of all 99 eggs? Like, you need to make more eggs. <laughs> Alright, so I, I know fried eggs is attainable, but the, uh, the brewing station is not. Now, how should the brewing station become available? That's a good question. And I have, you know, I have a bunch of places where it could be available. You know, I have some merchants. I have some get some some people in town that I don't have quests for yet, so I can devise a quest that uh, that will unlock the brewing station. But we definitely need the brewing station because I specifically I specifically put in tier one guest requests drinks so we have drip coffee green tea um I don't want tomatoes I don't know why tomatoes are in there I want mushrooms because you can forage for mushrooms in the forest immediately roses you can run and find Rep from Keurig cups, pushing K cups. No, those are a blight. I should make a whole game about the blight of K cups. <laughs> should that be the main villain? Should Keurig be coming to town? And I'll call them like Burig. All right, game is now. It's it's no longer like an energy company trying to buy the town. It is Burig needing a, a landfill to put all their Burig cups, their B cups. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. That is not a bad idea. It's actually, it's a little too political. Hmm. All right. Uh, 
Yeah, and I don't like how when you check out, you get conversational arts. So actually what I will do is um, when an item, so I want to do what Jesus uh, said earlier. Does every guest want an item? No, I don't think so. So, so here's what we'll do. Let's alter that script to get new requested item and let's let's do it here get new requested item maybe we don't want one today maybe we don't want one today and i can set received to true and that will just kind of work because if we received it then They'll just say no. And maybe I don't even have to show that dialogue if they don't want anything. That would be actually... That would kind of clean up the dialogue a little more. Alright, so let's just immediately say if random... So we'll only calculate this once a day. On day start, we'll calculate, hey, do I even want something new? And here, here, exactly. If uh, random.range or random.value is greater than, let's just say 50% for now then we actually get a new requested item. Perfect. Your anti-curing manifesto. Yeah, I'm like a, I'm super hipster when it comes to coffee. I'm, you know, I'm a pour over boy. I like my pour over. If I ever go like to an Airbnb, then I'll do French press there. Never, I always bring my French press with me. Um, that's it, yeah, if I go to like an Airbnb in the middle of nowhere or something. Pretty, pretty pretentious about coffee. Although I will say, as far as, like, as pretentious as I am, um, when I was in Japan a couple weeks ago, I went to the Starbucks Reserve, which, if you've never been there, if you've never heard of it, the uh, Japan, Star, let's see, Tokyo Starbucks Reserve. Let's look at some photos. It's kind of psychotic. Um, it looks ex It looks like this. It's uh, incredible. It's delicious. It's, you know, they don't just hit a button and out pops a latte. They have a team of very skilled baristas making cappuccinos and lattes. And, you know, you get your drip coffee as well. And it's, you know, they have their, they do all the roasting here and they, people line up on these chairs and they kind of talk. It's kind of like SeaWorld where there's someone with a microphone in the center of this roasting area talking to a crowd of like the roasting process. And this, this building is actually, you see the stairs in the background, this building is like five stories tall. Every brand that Starbucks owns, like uh, Tivana, and there's a couple of others, every brand is on a different floor. So you go to the second floor and it's like a Tivana bar and you go to the third floor, it's like the third brand that they own. And the food is really good and so, as pretentious as I am about coffee, which usually means anti-Starbucks, this Starbucks was awesome. French press at home, fresh ground every day. Yes, fresh ground, of course. I always get my beans and fresh ground every day as well. You have a favorite roaster, but they're an hour away and don't ship. Oh no, that sucks. That That's, uh, that's rough. My, yeah, my favorite roaster is about five minute drive, so I just pick up a couple of bags every two weeks. Uh, all right, so do I, do I even want this thing to show up? Like, I can put a condition here. Oh, so if the guest is checked in, I do put a condition, but I actually want another condition. I wanna say, if they actually need anything, put the need anything there. So, do they need anything? And I have that, I have that function. I I have that function. It's in guest interactable. It's called a check item requester for once. And I need to register this with the dialogue system. And 
Once I register this with the dialog system, then I'll be able to call this function directly. So these are end functions called by send message from the dialog system. No, no, no. We want to register with the dialog system, which means it needs to be a uh, singleton style because if it needs to be singleton style, then that's actually a pain. What else do I do? I think I think I do something else. Can I make a recommendation? Right, right, right. So I can't actually get anything. I can only set stuff using send message. Unless I make a singleton manager, which I have. I just don't feel like doing it. All right, whatever. Let's go to the MPC system. Let's make a singleton. Let's put it in here. So I already have stuff that I register with the dialog system. I'll just register some more. So has custom greeting, and I'll say register uh, has item request. Has item request. Has item request. Has. Has item request. Okay. So this is going to be. So it returns a bool and it, it accepts a string, and the string is the NPC's name. So here we go to. Let's just copy this one. Is guest checked in? So public bool has item request string, NPC name, and we just want all this chunk. And we just uh, basically want to check if get guest has item request. No, get guest dot item requester dot get as get item request. Where do I, what do I, who do I? So I don't want the guest, I want the guest interactable. And I want to check this thing. Get guest dot um guest interactable. So the the yeah, that's not that's not what I want. So the NPC is the NPC properties, isn't it? It's the NPC properties. So guest Ah, there we go. Get interactable dot check item. This is private, isn't it? Oops. If this is private, then I want to make it public. Oh, but it's an NPC interactable. What are we doing here? No, it's a guest. It is public. It's happening. It just gets the Interactable. Oh, that's why. Because it's not. An, it's an NPC interactable. I need to get interactable as guest interactable. Right. That's how you do it. Oh no. How do I do this in one line? I actually don't know. Guest interactable. Maverick, what up? Finally up early enough to watch. Yeah, I kind of isolate the the West Coasters here. How you doing? Good morning. How you doing? On NPCs, get interactable as guest interact. Okay, does that work? That works. And then why didn't that work before? Hey, C sharp people, tuna, West Coast rep. Wait, you're East Coast. You're an East Coaster, Michael. We got two Michaels. Uh, Nerk mind. <laughs> oh, you know, newborn baby. Oh my God. Wait, you have two children? Oh my God, congratulations. First of all, I'm ashamed that I didn't even realize you had two. I, I thought you had one. Oh my God, congrats. So uh, you said newborn, it's a newborn. So maybe, maybe I got a pass. First of all, congratulations. Mike Lombardo? No, that's not that's not Lombardo. But Mike Lombardo does show up usually. Get him in here. Excuse me. Oh, I hate doing that on stream. It's so embarrassing. So has item request, uh, check for, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, int. So, wait, why can't it? Does it not return null? I mean, oh, it doesn't return a bool. That was stupid. Uh, oh, right, this just jumps dialog. I just want to, I don't want to jump dialog. I want to return a public bool. Has item request. Get item is requested. Um, this is, yeah, this is different. Return item requester uh, has item request. I actually, I hate doing this, but. Is this the same thing I want? Uh, yeah, I guess I just want to return this. Uh, we went too deep, we went too deep. The other one is real fresh. You really do hate CH brackets? I love them. I hate Python. I'm s I hate, I hate um, not seeing, not having like the, the structure. Python drives me nuts. It doesn't look as organized to me. Can't read it. So this does return a bool. I should probably return a bool here too. Make things easier. I should just make this a bool. Not bool. And then return true, return false. Nah, I don't need a separate function. I mean, yeah, a semicolon, of course. Uh, oh, wait, okay, so if... Uh, no, this is a problem, because this gets the... No, 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 no. I had the right idea before. I don't know. Let's leave this the way it was. This is just poorly worded. I don't actually want to... I don't want to do that. So has an item request. If they already have an item request. Then I want the guest to... Or the NPC to know this. Nope. Since when do you come on <laughs> here on Monday? Because uh, I, I don't think I could do tomorrow. Also... So now we got three mics. We got three mics chilling next to each other. Look at all you mics. Number one, number one most common name from the years 1984 to 1989. <laughs> Show us your doggies. Michael from the North, what's your dog's name? Michael from the North. You're Michael from the North. We got Michael from the North, Michael from the East, and Michael from the West. Wait, it's Pepe? Like, for Pepe? Pep? Pepe? Because my dog's name is Pep. That's crazy. <laughs> is that a, wait, is that another thing that we got? No, that's crazy. You're crazy. My wife nixed naming the new baby Michael for that reason. Oh, Pepe the Frog. Okay, yeah, Pepe. So my dog's name is Pep. That's crazy. Yeah. No, Mike. You're Mike Lombardo. You're Michael from the East. Check emoji name. Nerk Pepe. There it is. Alright, I gotta, I gotta, I, I left like a trail of breadcrumbs through this code that I need to, I need to go back. So it was in the MPC system. Okay, so has item request. Okay, so now I can go all the way back to the dialogue system and I can, I can show this only if we have that specific item request. Oh, there's one more thing we have to do. We have to register it here. Dialog extension, conditions, add a new one. It's called has item request. We're going to put it in the guest sub 
menu and parameter is a bool and where the return value is bool and a bool and the parameter is a string. Okay. So now that should all work. And if I go to need anything, how do I pass the NPC's name? Is your northeast further than Quebec? Quebecois? Andrew, you sounded like Jeff Goldblum a little just then. Oh, and I said what? Hmm, should I just um, alter my entire personality to be a little more Goldblumish? Because Goldblumish is a is a language I'd love to live in. Did I just sound worse? Do I just need to be natural and I sound more like Jeff Goldblum? All right, so I need to add another condition here. Uh, let's go plus. Uh, no, not a quest. We need a custom. Guest has item request. And we need to pass in the guest's name. Uh, I don't know how to get that right now. So let's just say guest name. And we'll apply it. Okay, and now how do I get the guest's name? Is guest checked in variable conversant index? Is the conversant index the name of the guest? I think it is, so let me just copy and paste that. And we'll use that instead. Okay. That might be that might be right. Watch streak reached. Mike Lombardo is currently on a three-stream streak. Look at you. Same. When are you going to move to the West Coast? Same. Invaded by baguettes. <laughs> the stream is frozen for me, but I hear him. Click that little refresh button. Careful, you might get an ad though. I'm very sorry. Uh, for all you peeps out there who are new here, my name is Andrew. I'm working on a game called Upline Lake. Give it a wish list. It's a life sim innkeeper sim. We're working on how the guests want stuff. Ameripon! Kanban. Kanban for you. Ohio for me. Ohio gozaimasu. How's my pitch accent? <laughs> Terrible, I know. Okay, I'm gonna get some house holdian things done. What's a house holdian thing? Try to jump on when I see the stream. You go do your thing. Thanks for stopping by. Congratulations on the, the new baby. And uh, I hope you're getting some sleep. I refreshed, it unfroze, but I got an ad. This guy hasn't been the same since he got sponsored. <laughs> Mike, you have a Prime sub that you don't use. I know this for a fact. You can use it. You can use your Prime sub to get rid of the ads. I, he doesn't hear any of this because he's still watching the ads. Great. He'll never know. Can someone teach Mike Lombardo how to use his Prime sub? Not that I'm asking for it. <laughs> I don't I don't beg for, ad, for support here. But uh, if you don't want ads and you have a free Prime sub, you know how to use it. I don't think it's just you. I think it's Twitch in general. I'm getting laggy Twitch streams on all the streams. Let me see my stats. Uh, let me see. Tools. Um, stats. Do I have good stats right now? I'm getting 60 frames per second. Um, my stream is... It looks fine. My data looks good on my side. I don't know. I don't actually know how to read this. I'm just seeing numbers and going, yeah, those are numbers. <laughs> Those were definitely numbers. Okay, I'm back. I hope I didn't miss anything about Prime subs. <laughs> Last Prime sub I had, probably the Italian. <laughs> oh my god, Michael. Michael. Quickly! What was that crazy thing that happened this weekend? Oh, uh, I got written up by, uh, by a publication. A, a, a publication that does, that writes up cozy games. And I got a ton of wish lists. I got about a hundred wish lists in, a, in in three days, or more. I got like hundred and fifty wish lists in three days, which it usually I usually get like three or four a day, 
So getting 150 in three days is very nice. Uh, I don't think it's an issue with your stream or my connection. Probably a Twitch thing. Yeah, probably a Twitch thing. What? Yeah. So, Mike, remember when I texted the group? Oh, I got written up. That turned into a lot of, uh, a lot of wish lists. I got written up on Friday, too. I'm in jeopardy of losing my job. That's awesome. Gonzo, keep it up. Keep getting written up. It's good to get here. Wait. Written up. Oh, losing job? No, that's not good. Don't do that again. Don't do that. Okay. Where were we? We were, so we got this we got this going. Let's see if it works. So what should happen is we got errors. Void to boom. Oh wait, what? Wait, what? Did I, oh I didn't save it. You gotta save your scripts. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I was I was on a high yesterday. Like I was really jittery and, and in such a good mood. Let's keep this party going. Checking. Can spawn. Oh, the trees. Okay. We fired a guy because he was late 67 times in four. <laughs> Is that a real number? Are you exaggerating? Didn't know that was possible. <laughs> That's amazing. So I will say in the VFX community, being late, not a big deal. Because you usually work really late all the time. Where's the broom? I need to put the broom. Oh, here it is. 67 is enough. So is four. I mean, is that is that like an accurate number? How do you? Yeah, if you're it's five five days a week, times uh, four. Twenty days in a month, times another four. So you have 80 opportunities. That's a lot. That's a lot. We got no guests today. Let's fast forward. So uh, it's already 840. This is going to be a quick, this is a quick stream today because I started, I say I started late, but I definitely started on time. I started at seven. Just like I say, I always start. Uh, I just didn't wake up super, super early today because I wasn't planning on streaming. I just couldn't go back to bed. I'm like, you know, let's get this stream going. Also, Hollis was just here. Why did Hollis stay again? All right, come, come, come back, come back. Hi, need anything? Oh, I would love a tea leaf. Great, I have a tea leaf. Right? No, this is a green tea. Let's get a tea leaf. Tea leaves come from these lighter bushes. There's one. So now I gotta run and find you. Oh my god, slow down. I gotta slow them down. I can't catch up to them and I keep getting stuck on all this debris. No, he went back up there. I got you, I got you. No, don't eat it. <laughs> Come back. Come back. Oh my god, this is so annoying. Appreciate it. All right, so now if I talk to him, it doesn't show up. Yes. yes. Can I make a recommendation? Go to the visitor center. Not yet discovered. Go to the pond. Not yet discovered. Not Nothing's discovered, so I can't send them anywhere. All right. That's good. All right, we did it. That's good progress. Um... I had, a, I had an issue where um, guests, they don't go on excursions anymore. They very rarely go on excursions. And I think I made the, I think I made the conditions too harsh. So let's actually make the conditions a little less harsh for excursions. I basically made it like uh, near impossible. Um, let's see. Where do I do the calculation on whether or not they should go to a hotspot? I think it's in the guest script. Excuse me. Oh, please, I hope everyone had a good weekend. I hope everyone enjoys their Monday so far. I am lying high. I'm in too good of a mood. There's only there's only one way there's only one way to go from here, and it is down. I'm in too good a mood. It's very dangerous to be in a very good mood. Okay, so where do I calculate hotspot? Hotspot. Calculate 
hotspot? No, calculate activity. Oh, calculate next activity. Looking for activity, looking for activities. So looking for calculated complete. Where do I put it? Where do I calculate? God dang it. Activity reached? No. Okay, here, act, uh, calculate next activity. No. Looking for activities. Oh, maybe it's the scheduler. Maybe the scheduler does it. Schedule system. Looking for activities. Okay, then I go to the in system. I hate ticking through these, it's so annoying. Uh, go to bed instantly, leaving, schedule guest activities. Okay, so here we schedule next activity. Where do I schedule a hotspot? Oh my god. Okay, I went back and looked it up. It was 55 times in four months. <laughs> That's still a ridiculous number. Uh, I can't figure, I can't remember where I calculate whether or not they should go to a hotspot or go to an activity. And this is part of the problem. What if I go to current hotspot? Set hotspot. Uh, let's go to the scheduler and see what happens when I set a hotspot. Uh, looking for, return from hotspot, looking for hotspot. I only have... How do they do this? Did they take it out and that's why they don't go on excursions anymore? Like, what happened? This is crazy. Go to hotspot. So, alright. Where, where do you get called? The in calls it. Register specific hotspot. Who calls you? Uh, the in does it here. Register hotspot and... Okay, so who calls you? In. Register hotspot. Oh, so it's just... Okay, it's just randomly one of these. Alright, so... Okay, so here's the logic. Got it, got it, got it. So as long as it's earlier than 6 a.m., that's the problem. I have a flag here that says do not go to a hotspot if it's if it's greater than 6 a.m. and it's supposed it's not supposed to be 6 a.m. it's supposed to be 6 p.m. which is 18 o'clock that's why they weren't going to hotspots because it was never 18 o'clock it's I mean, they wake up at like 6 30 it could never be that unless it was one oh right they went once and it was a bug and it was past midnight so at <laughs> midnight passed which is then it the clock goes back to zero at midnight and it was a bug that they were awake and then then they went on the excursion i'm like what is that oh god that's why okay i think i do another check of if it's their first day they don't do it maybe i took that out here we go okay that's it bug bug fixed all right that was easy bug fixed I think I had it here actually. Um, fix hotspots. Guests stop visiting them. Bunk. Um, that's good. All right. Um, what's next? I do want to alert the player that there is an item request. So let's actually do that. It's eight forty-six. That's actually going to take too long. Let's do little things so we can feel good about the stream. Let's do little things. Let's just take a bunch of these things. Make footprints spawn less often. Yes, they spawn way too often. Um, they spawn way too often. And I actually don't alert the player how to clean them up. I don't say you need a broom. They just kind of show up. What's, what, what, should I, what should I do there? I used to live a five minute walk from that place and they had a whistle that went off five minutes before work start. I'd regularly use that as my alarm clock, slam some clothing on and run over. Oh my God. 
That's that's risky. No, I need a I need time to wake up and have breakfast and I like to wake up super freaking early now. Um so yeah, footprints are spawned by the in debris manager. Debris spawner. So how do I calculate it? I calculate a random number between zero and four, and then I spawn. But what I really want to do is I want to do like negative three, negative two, and then say mathf.clamp zero. Zero to four. Okay, so now there's basically a 50% chance that none will spawn and a 50% chance that one to three will spawn. That's better. That's way less often. Eventually, I want to make an item that you can place, like a doormat. I want to make a doormat item that changes that number and basically makes it so that footprints very rarely show up. Uh, I'll make that item one day. Today is not the day, although I really want to. There's a little voice in my head saying, you can finish that item in 10 minutes, do it, do it, do it, but no, no, no. Let's just tick this off the list. Remove text animator script from player conversation subtitle text. I could do that in 10 minutes. I might have already done that, actually. And keep dialog UI. So the PC subtitle panel. Did I already do this? Text mesh pro, text mesh pro, typewriter effect. I think I did it already. Yeah. Not the text animator. Great. Done. Didn't even have to do anything. Add constraining bounds to construction and demo camera. Um, yeah, I, I should do that. That's not right now. Weather effects need to snap to cutscenes. That's not that important right now. Player can move during the cutscene. That's annoying. I want to. I wanna, I, why is that possible? Let's see why that's possible. So why there's certain cutscenes that the player pause. And then there's certain cutscenes where the player does not pause, and I think it's because when I enter a new zone, I immediately start a cutscene, which pauses the game, but then the zone finishes lo loading next and unpauses the player. So that's a problem. Let me go to the player systems, the player nav. I'll expose the debug values and see if we're paused. So here's busy. When you get paused, busy gets checked, right? So I'm going to go into the new zone. Busy never even gets checked, but we can't run. Oh, OK, there's actually a pause here. So I see it. It ticks on. Can't move. Ticks off. Great. Um, if I kill this uh, save file, if I kill this save file and I run back into the zone, there should be um, there should be a cutscene that plays, and then I can watch that pause value. And I'm, you know, I'm pretty certain that it just gets unchecked. So we're paused now, which is good. Paused again, unchecked. All right, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we unpause, and, but the, and this cutscene doesn't repause us. So. That's the problem. We're unpausing from the load and then the cutscene starting. So what I need to do in that instance is 
I need to find the two pauses and I need to sync them better. Let's find the two pauses. So the warp system is the first pause. And we unpause from the GUI controller. Ooh, interesting. End of day load. Uh, end of day load. All oh, right, this is the end of day warp. Okay. So who, who unpauses us? Who is doing the unpausing? Please, someone speak up. Let's actually go to the player nav. Let's go to the player nav and just print there. Player nav. Let's go to the player nav and pause. Here we go, pause player. Make pop, make busy. So go to pause print string format pausing set to J good morning how's it going J Thank you for the follow. Holy crap. Thank you for the follow. Uh, thank you for all the information you sent me and, you know, our conversation from last night. Incredibly useful. We hit our goal. Wow. We've been hitting our goals almost every stream now. I think I need to make the goals bigger. Set a new goal. I'm gonna set a bigger goal. Let's. Nah, 150 is good. Let's just go 10. Goals are nice. So, no, seriously, I appreciate uh, everything you sent me, and I, I, I think I'm, I'm more, I'm understanding. I'm being a little cryptic to everyone else. This is just me and you talking right now, but I, I'm, I'm understanding, uh, you know, a little better what, what you got going on. Yeah, no, it was, it was very helpful, and I, I see the benefits. Benefits are, benefits are huge. Secrets, gotta keep secrets, you know? Maybe I'll announce something next week, maybe not, I don't know. Stick around. Uh, I do need to keep my eye out on, uh, on Twitch, though, because this, ra this stream is gonna come to an end soon, and we're gonna raid someone. Uh, but I do want to finish this last little thing I was working on. Got to start the old day job, you know. Sometimes you got to work. So we need to we, let's just fix this one bug, shall we? Did I save that script? Yes. Pausing set to. So we'll see where that comes from, where that call comes from, and in the order that they come from, and we'll 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 figure this out. My least favorite thing in this game has been just figuring out the order of operations on when scenes load and... Oh my god. So many things try to unpause the player. Or try to pause the player, okay. That's a lot of things trying to pause the player. Oh my god, clear. 70 times. In the first 5 seconds of the game, 70 times the player was tried to be... It was paused and unpaused. That's not good. All right, let's enter this new scene. Oh my god. Okay, okay. What is happening? No, 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 please. Console. Bigger. We need it bigger. So, a script unpaused the player one... Uh, what looks like 15 times. And... Why? You know what it is? It's not a script unpausing the player 15 times. It's I have 15 scripts listening for pause and they're all 
rowing this. So, okay, that's not, all right, that's not that big a deal. So who is doing the calling? Who is doing the calling? Who is unpausing us? It looks like the first thing is the... Oh no, so I can't actually see it because... Oh, the warp system, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's this. If it's not cutscene only, we warp. And uh, it's the last thing we do in the warp. And that's the thing that's... That's the first thing unpausing us. So at one second, yeah. And the thing that is pausing us is the cutscene system. So here's the cutscene system trying to pause us, but then one instant later, one millisecond, not millisecond, what is this? A hundredth of a second? One hundredth of a second later. Those codes would fry my brain? Oh, they fry my brain, especially at this hour. Uh, all right, so we have the, how do we just, you know, delay this a little bit? The problem is I want the cutscene to start before we fade from black, but I want the unpause of the warp system to unpause us from the end of the fade. So they actually need to be off set like that. They have to be. Oh, and that's not one millisecond. That is one full second. Or yeah, that's not a hundredth. That's a full second later. And because the fade is one second, that actually, that lines up. The, the math adds up. Uh, so we have some things to do. We have some things to figure out eventually, but not today. Today, we are going to end it. And we're going to raid Sover Sovereign Dev. Uh, thanks for joining me on this random ass Monday. Um, my name is Andrew and I appreciate you all for hanging out. I'm here usually twice a week. Uh, but today's, uh, today was a special day, so I might do three times a week, but I might not do tomorrow, which is my normal stream day. We'll see. Thanks for, for hanging out and, uh, Let's let's go check out what Sovereign Dead's doing, shall we? Yeah, it's only Monday. It's only Monday. Jay, have a great day. Jesus, I'll see ya. Tuna, grr. I know it's only Monday. Uh, Mike, uh, will he be here tomorrow? I don't know. We'll see. Oh, let's see how we, let's see how it is when I wake up. But uh, I have I'm a little busy tomorrow, so I might not be able to. All right, everyone. Peace.